Hi there, my name is Mr. Pete, and I am currently a fourth grade teacher, and this is a sad moment as we read the last full chapter of The Tale of Despero and the coda, which comes after it. <sighs> it looks like Despero's won. Roscuro is going to get to eat soup. The princess has forgiven him, even though she doesn't like him. They're all going up to the banquet hall to eat soup, and Everybody's forgiven, their anger and their hearts are fixed, but we let's see what happens here because we still have some, some unknown. Chapter 52, happily ever after. But the question you want answered, I know, is did they live happily ever after? Yes and no. What of Rescuro? Did he live happily ever after? Well, the Princess P gave him free access to the upstairs of the castle and he was allowed to go back and forth from the darkness of the dungeon to the light of the upstairs. But alas, he never really belonged in either place. The sad fate, I'm afraid, of those whose hearts break and then mend in crooked ways. But the rat, in seeking forgiveness, did manage to shed some small light, some happiness into another life. How? Rescure our reader told the princess about the prisoner who had once owned a red tablecloth. And the princess saw to it that the prisoner was released, and Roscuro led the man up out of the dungeon and to his daughter, Megri Sow. Meg, as you might have guessed, did not get to be a princess, but her father, to atone for what he had done, treated her like one for the rest of his days. And what of Despero? Did he live happily ever after? Well, he did not marry the princess, if that is what you mean by happily ever after. Even in a world as strange as this one, a mouse and a princess cannot marry. But reader, they can be friends. And they were. Together, they had many adventures. Those adventures, however, are another story. And this story, I'm afraid, must now draw to a close. But before you leave, reader, imagine this. Imagine an adoring king and a glowing princess, a serving girl with a crown on her head and a rat with a spoon on his, all gathered around a table in a banquet hall. In the middle of the table, there is a great kettle of soup. Sitting in place of honor, right next to the princess, is a very small mouse with big ears. And peeking out from behind a dusty velvet curtain, looking in amazement at the scene before them, are four other mice. Mon Dieu, look, a look, says Antoinette. He lives, he lives, and he seems such the happy mouse. Oh, forgiven, whispers Lester. Cripes, says Furlo, unbelievable. Just so, says the Threadmaster Hovis, smiling. Just so. And reader, it is just so, isn't it? The end. <laughs> Sorry, it's dusty. Oh. Coda. Do you remember when Despero was in the dungeon, cupped in Gregory the jailer's hand, whispering a story in the old man's ear? I would like it very much. If you thought of me as a mouse telling you a story, this story with the whole of my heart, whispering it in your ear, in order to save myself from the darkness and to save you from the darkness too. Stories are light, Gregory the Jailer told Despero. Reader, I hope you have found some light here. For those that know me know I cry a lot when I read. <laughs> this is just us though. Um, what a great book. So you tell me, did they live happily? Um, and I do hope that reading this with me brought you some light. Thank you so much for joining me. I don't know what our next book is going to be, but, you know, if you click the bell, you'll get notified when that happens. Please make sure you like and subscribe. Give great comments because that always helps our discussion. Uh, I will see you soon.
in the next book. Peace.